the focus today is on WWE 2K23. I'll take a look at the, the general gameplay, should we say, in the presentation of 2K23, and then break down each of the game modes. So starting with the gameplay, 2K and visual concepts have done a mightily impressive job in taking what works so well about 2K22 and just tweaking a few things here or there. Uh, in fairness, the, the 2K22 control system and the game mechanics they were pretty darn great, to be honest. So there wasn't a need for any major changes in that regard. As expected, the character models, uh, the movement, the uh, the rings, the arenas themselves, they all look absolutely phenomenal. It goes without saying, this is the prettiest, shiniest, most beautiful looking wrestling game in the history of wrestling games. But we've had many a pretty game before that's ended up being a total disappointment uh, once you get past, I guess, the, the flashy visuals. Thankfully, that is far from the case with WWE 2K23. Uh, as for those tweaks in gameplay that I was on about, uh, it's it's now slightly trickier to counter moves, uh, but that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing because at times on WWE 2K22, it felt a little too easy maybe to reverse an attack or a big move. Uh, and here it's still a, a very straightforward process in terms of hitting a button at the, the right time, but it's just one, it, it seems a little bit a smidge harder to master, should we say. There's like a, a smaller, it feels like there's a smaller time window to, to block an attack, which I'm I'm all for that. I think it works really well. And likewise, I mean, 2K23, it gives you the ability now to dodge or to throw up a defensive block, as it were, almost like you're in a, a, a boxing fight uh, or, or an MMA fight. So you can, you can dodge, you can block, um, to thwart attacks and there's also of course has been hyped ahead of time a new kickout system now yes i know some people might have been a bit like oh but i really like the, the old kickout system and i was one of those people uh, but this new kickout system it features a slider that moves from left to right and you have to push up in the case of the playstation 5 on with r3 uh, to catch the bar as it whizzes by it um, now, the more knackered your wrestler is, the smaller the bar is, and the faster the movement. So, the more tired you are, then it's, it's tricky to kick out pins. I wasn't too keen on this idea initially, but in practice, it's actually really fun. Uh, and it's, it's a fun way of handling kickouts, and it really does bring some nice drama to the matches. Uh, I mean, And for those, I mean, if you don't fancy the idea of this, or you give it a go and, yeah, it's not really for you, there is the option to revert back to the more, I guess, the, the button bashing kickout methods of, of WWE 2K22. So it's win-win, really. There's a new kickout system. If you don't like it, hey, the old one's still there. Now, as for a few other notes on general gameplay of WWE 2K23, there's a brilliant meatiness, I guess would be the word, uh, to the, the physicality and the feel of matches, especially when using the more, uh, more powerful characters. So it makes a whole lot of fun when you have a couple of big meaty men slapping meat such as, say, Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley, or stick Big E into the mix. Those guys, you really feel the uh, the physicality, the power of the strike. Same with in the women's division, something like Rhea Ripley, it works really well for. Basically, the stronger the characters, you can really tell, and it really, it, it, you feel it through the controller, around, and it works really coolly. Uh, and there's also a really, a really extremely great, I'm going to say, possum mechanism in place. For that, if, if you dial on the mat, you can lull your opponent into, into a false sense of security. So you can either hit a quick roll up or you can have a surprise attack, which, I mean, for me, as someone who grew up with commentators like, say, Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan, forever using the term, he's playing possum. This this ability puts a big smile on my face. It's it's very cool just that when somebody thinks you're down and out, you just quickly roll them up on the slide. From a presentation standpoint, the main menu screen, the loading screens there, they're all extremely crisp, they're clean. Uh, the match setup screen as well has been tidied up a little bit from WWE 2K22. Um, it's it just, it looks a very sleek, smooth game all around. It's, it's a top draw in that regard. And before we get into the various modes, it's also worth noting that Xavier Woods takes over from Drew Gulak here in providing tutorials for 2K23. And much like Gulak's work on 2K22 was nicely done, the job here from Woods brings, uh, there's a sense of charm and fun to it in case you, you, uh, you're new to the 2K games, the, the wrestling games, and you want to go through the ropes a little bit. Or if you just want to refresh it on certain elements of 2K23, you can go and visit old Xavier Woods and the New Day Man will give you plenty of pointers and of course there's there's war games the war games match is featured in a wwe game for the very first time now for me sometimes on 2k22 the multi-person matches can be a little crowded and frustrating looking at you money in the bank this time i was i, I was really pleasantly surprised by how much of a blast war games is uh, you've got the two rings you've got the double cage wrapped around it and you've even can see in the background your teammates or your opponent's teammates locked in their little cages before they come into the, the match there in the distance war games is just a whole big bunch of fun and you can do it three on three you can do it four on four another new element brought to the table for 2k23 is in royal rumble matches teammates and factions will work together they'll refuse to fight each other which i think is really cool it's 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 something that feels long long overdue so say You've got the Usos as, as two people who are in the ring while they're waiting for somebody else to come in. Rather than fight each other, they'll wait for that next person to enter the match. 
Uh, and then when that person gets in the match, they'll double team it. Now they will fight if they're the final two in the match, but yeah, this is just, it's a really, it's a really nice touch. It does, it feels massively over to you on this one. Let's get into the, the standard game mode. And first mode we're gonna dive into, of course, is the much hyped John Cena showcase. Boo, boo, doo, boo. Here players are tasked with reliving a bunch of classic Cena matches from over the years. Uh, and they're all matches, interestingly, that John Cena lost. Uh, in a fresh spin on the usual showcase offerings, here you actually take control of Big Match John's, uh, the, the opponents from those matches. So basically you have to go up against John Cena a lot. And John Cena is very tough to, even like uh, as Kurt Angle, you, you have the uh, the ruthless aggression, the slap, the John Cena debut from 2002. Even that John Cena is a, a tough cookie to put away, even though his rating wouldn't say he is. That was that was tricky. Showcase, it's it's always fun showcase, in particular the, the way they styled the Rey Mysterio showcase on 2K22. That was that was really nicely done, really classily done. Uh, but things can get a little bit repetitive sometimes on showcase. I mean, in the case of Ray, you had to play as Rey Mysterio for, I don't know, like 15 or more matches. So after a bit, it's like, oh, okay, I know they're all slightly different versions of Ray uh, and whatnot, and they've got different strengths, and but it does get a little bit stale. But here, by having you take control of Cena's opponents, that it stops that staleness from kicking in. You've got like the likes of, if I mentioned Kurt Angle, you've got Rob Van Damme, you've got uh, Triple H, you've got Edge, you've got The Rock, you've got AJ Styles. They're just some of the people you take control of in Showcase. Yes, there's no CM Punk and there's no Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, but that that was always going to be happening. That was always expected. And yes, Punk had great matches with those people. He lost against those people in big matches. But let's face it, we all knew they weren't going to be in the game. But of course, defeating Cena and completing certain objectives during these matches, that unlocks certain prizes, such as if you beat uh, the 16-time world champion with Rob Van Dam at One Night Stand in 2005, that unlocks RVD as a character, it unlocks the ECW arena, and it unlocks Cena's uh, the WWE title that was being used at the time. Prior to each of these matches, there's an intro from John Cena. So he discusses the match, the opponent, the, the impact it had on his career, and it's it's done in a, it's Cena in a, in a sound studio, in a suit, all very suited and booted. But it's done in a way that's entertaining, it's informative if maybe you're a newer wrestling fan or a younger wrestling fan who maybe you weren't around for Rob Van Dam versus John Cena. It's a nice way to kind of get people up to speed or just to give you a nice little recap on these battles of yesteryear. Like in WWE 2K22, the gameplay action of these matches are, are interspersed with real footage that it seamlessly lines up, it's really nicely done. There is one mild downside to all of this though, and, and it's that there's, there's no commentary during showcase mode. So instead you get these really generic rock music songs that just play on repeat on a loop for the entirety of the match. I mean, thankfully those songs do differ from match to match, but the tune could get a little bit annoying if, if you end up having to take your time in one match, because then it's like, geez, man, I really wish this tune was, I suppose you can turn the music off though. So there, there will be that option, but yeah, it's, it's just, it can be a little bit grating, but it is, tiny 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 down there for me onto my rise because last year's version of my rise was it was it was a lot of fun and it, it was a proper standout of 2k22 and this year my rise is back and like eric bischoff it's better than ever first up with my rise you agreed with a, a, a nicely done video package with uh showing current wv superstars as they reflect back on their early days uh, it's basically the, the point is to, to chronicle their journey and to emphasize that you can choose your own path where you start isn't where you finish you you will make friends you will make enemies you will maybe change characters whatever there's becky lynch is in there the miz is in there john cena is in there just showing their formative years and how they evolved into what we see today um now here you have two choices in my eyes there's two paths to take one is legacy and the other one is called lock so legacy there you take control of an up-and-comer uh, a, a youngster who's and is a legend is a, is a hall of famer wwe hall of famer and so you that helps you get your foot in the door at wwe and um, but then of course there are those people who are um aren't so happy that you've maybe not paid your dues as it were um so that's one route to take uh, and then it's down to you of course to prove that that was wrong and as for lock the other option there you're presented as uh, the next big thing you're you're the calmest prospect you're the blue chipper you're the future of the industry and again that immediately puts you at odds with various members of the wwe roster because hey they, they got their chip on the shoulder because who's this guy he's not that special um, now with, with Legacy, you take control of a female character. With Lock, you control take control of a, of a male character. Um, both of them are really good. In terms of both Legacy and Lock, there's plenty of, of story strands are always moving. Lots of possible directions for you to take uh, more than there were in, in 2K22. Uh, each decision you make will shape your story, will will shape your character, will shape your alliances, will shape your enemies. Uh, and as ever, performing tasks and, and winning matches 
that earns you ability points, which then you can use on your character to, to make them better, to improve their skill sets, to make their submission game better, to make their speed better, their endurance, well, wh whatever it is. Um, now, of course, you, you the first and foremost here, the, what you would think is you create your own wrestler, and that is an option. But in a nice touch, you can also use a already created wrestler that you've downloaded from the, the community creations or something you've made elsewhere yourself on, on your on your console and your system. So in theory, you could take uh, a core, a created wrestler of John Moxley or say Jamie Hater and play through Myro's Myro's My Rise as uh, as that particular character. Um, so that's a very cool little uh, touch. And, and likewise, on the flip side of that, if you create your own wrestler for My Rise, you can explore and use that character in your general 2K23 play, which is something you couldn't do last year. So yeah, after a few hours of playing My Rise, the the, the person I had who was a, a badass female named CLP, as in cultured left peg. Um, they got to, they had matches on, on pay-per-view, on SmackDown, on main event, on NXT, on NXT, well, NXT 2.0, sorry, uh, on NXT UK, at an indie show, uh, in the school gym, uh, on a trip to Mexico, and I made lots of enemies and friends along the way, uh, and became Queen of the Ring, I'll have you know. But this, uh, that's just scratching the surface, and their paths that you don't have to take. Now, we've got GM mode as well, that is back. So, it was brought back last year with 2K22. Last time out, it was good to have a general manager mode back, but it was a little bit disappointing. It was a little bit flat, my GM. But here, it's uh, I can like say it's a vastly um, superior experience this time. Now, in terms of the general managers, you can choose. You can take control of Adam Pearce, there's Sonya Deville, Stephanie McMahon, Kurt Angle, Mick Foley, Eric Bischoff. I did say I'd be mentioning him again later. Uh, uh, Xavier Woods and Tyler Breeze. They they kind of front the whole thing and they're an entertaining presence with video packages and whatnot. Or you can even make your own custom GM. Then there's the brands you control. There's Raw, SmackDown, there's NXT and NXT 2.0. They're two separate brands here. And there's also the inclusion of WCW. So you can take control of WCW. Although it's a bit weird because you're, you're then making matches for a WWE show or for a WWE pay-per-view, should we say. Um, but it's still, it's, it's nice to have WCW in there. As a WCW nerd, I'll, I'll take that all day long. Now, of course, all of this with GM, it, by GM, it always starts off with a draft. So you pick the talent who you want to lead the charge for your brand of choice. So from there, you put on the matches, line up the rivalries, design that you think will bring in ratings. And you've got a bullet, a, a bullet, a budget to balance as well. So, it, like I said, it's a vastly superior experience to 2K22's my GM mode. And there's more matches. There's mid car titles that you can actually use. And the mode, most importantly, lasts for just it lasts for more than one season. Uh, last time, that was one of the big annoyances about my rise is you you plow through it and then it just ends after after one season, after one year. Uh, this time, though, it it carries on for multiple seasons, and the end of each season brings a chance to have a another draft. So that's kind of cool. What we've got here with my GM, it's it's good. But it's not totally flawless. Uh, there is one frustrating element, which was it was prevalent in the in the last game, is the 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 tinkering, should we say, of Triple H. Now he'll like on 2K22, he's there to 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 suggest matches to you, and a lot of them don't really fit or make sense or just a bit random. But then if you don't put those matches on, then you'll be penalised. So it's like oh right okay. Uh, but overall though, my GM on my, on WWE. WWE 2K23. It's 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 a fun experience, even if there's there is unfortunately no capability to play online against the uh, other general managers. But you can play with four of you. If you're you're around someone's house, there's four of you, you can go on and play. So that's 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 something that's a plus. Quickly get onto universe mode. There's not been any major tweaks to, to universe mode this time out. Again, you have the option to play the more uh traditional sandbox mode where you can completely shape the entirety of the WWE universe, play matches as anybody you want on any show. Uh, and then there's the, the more streamlined version of Universe Mode where you take control of one particular talent and embark on their own personal journey. When I was having a go with that earlier today, because I'd, I'd seen it was uh, sadly the uh, the one year passing uh, of Scott Hall. So I, uh, I chose Razor Ramon, Ichigo, and it embarked on just a solo focus journey with uh, with Razor, with the bad guy. Uh, and it was it's, it's cool because it matched me up immediately with Jey Uso. I kind of became part of the bloodline, I guess, in a way, because I'd be flanked to the ring by Jimmy and Solo Sokoa. They uh, got into a rivalry with the, the Street Profits, then a rivalry with RK-Bro, then branched off now a feud with Macho Man Randy Savage. So it's a fun experience, Universe. It's, it's uh, There is, though, there is one notable tweak that I'm very, very much a fan of. Uh, is you can ahead of time you can select to uh, disrespect or respect but hey let's face it disrespect this far cooler uh, to come into play during a match so you can choose for say in the instance of Razor Ramon uh, I, you can choose to offer Montez Ford a handshake before the match but then only to pull your hand away and give him a slap in the face it's um, it's it's a nice way to kind of heat up rivalries and you can do stuff like that 
uh, before the match, during the match, after the match. You just select it all before you go into the match. Uh, and, and you don't have to, like I said, it doesn't have to always be disrespect. It can be, it's a way of intensifying rivalries, starting rivalries, um, creating enemies, or maybe even to form alliances where maybe it's a, a respectful handshake at the end of a match. Now, my faction, now this is something that I'm afraid it, it doesn't really do much for me, my faction. It didn't on 2K22 and it doesn't on 2K23. I mean, it's, it's, essentially it's a trading card game which if you've got like the the mobile games with the we do with the trading cards i'm sure you would love this it's not a comment on the quality of the mode it's just personally for me it's not something that's that's particularly my bad it's fun on my faction to see you've got unique unique variations of characters um who are solely available in my faction or at least temporarily solely available in my faction i uh, like dominic dijak on on the previous game and version of Alexa Bliss and on this one there is an action figure version of John Cena is available on my faction uh yes with like the plastic appearance all the joints and the chiseled and although that isn't the the only random variation of John Cena hidden away in the in 2k23 because there is uh, an actual super Cena variant um as in uh, this all-powerful version of John Cena uh, I think he's a hundred rated uh, out of a hundred obviously of course and it's this version you literally cannot see it's visible only because you can see the jorts and the sneakers so that's a, that's a cool little twist especially because you know John Cena is the focus of this one wrapping this up it, it would be remiss to talk about wrestling video game and not talk about the creation suite at least in passing so in 2k23 there's there's just a ridiculous amount of options if you look at to create your own wrestlers your own arena your own belt your own money in the bank briefcase whatever the options are utterly ludicrous um, although at the time of recording in this, there's there aren't that many creations online because the game's not fully out yet, as in it's released on March 17th widely. Obviously, some people have got in early and they've got the pre-orders. Um, but yes, in terms of creating stuff, you can create whatever you want. It, and it's just, it's a super high quality. It's just, it's one of the fun modes of, of wrestling games dating back 20 years, man. I, I can remember the, the early Smackdowns creating people where you just had a, a bottom, a, a top, and a head. And that, that was it. Crack on. See if you can get Ken Shamrock. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, as ever, there will be a whole slew of creations uploaded to community uh, sooner rather than later. And I'm sure you yourself, you know, you can have plenty of tinkers with whatever is available there if you fancy yourself as quite the creator. Uh, the game's just absolutely fantastic. It's it's WWE 2K22 was such a, a much needed return to form. Uh, and 2K Games Visual Concepts have, have taken what worked so well about that game and just improved upon it with, with 2K23. There's no massive overhauls, it's just looking at what worked. And can we slightly tweak that? Yeah, we can, and now it's even better. If you're looking at some sort of rating, or hey, dare I say it's star rating, uh, I'd go with a, a solid eight and a half, maybe nine out of 10. I, I'd, I'd go with a 10 from that for me. Uh, yeah, eight and a half or nine out of 10. Showcase mode, something special. It's, it's really fun to dive into that, especially the dynamic of playing not John Cena, playing against John Cena, beating up John Cena, as you can take control of AJ Styles. Uh, and it's just, there's the sheer number of possibilities presented by my rise is just that's, that could well be the star of the show, I think, with with uh, with 2K23. It's just, it's, it's, it's really cool dynamic with lots of options. Uh, all over the place of where you can take your own personal story. Um, but yeah, most importantly, regardless of what mode you're playing, the gameplay action itself is is massively enjoyable. There's a, a, safe, a sense of weighted physicality to it all. It's, it's quite easy to pick up the controls, but then on the other side of that, it's it's a little bit tricky to master. So you're not going to pick this up and be amazing at it straight away. I'm sure some of you will do, because some of you are smart asses. You'll get to grips with it nicely and, and appreciate that progress. So, uh, so yeah, all in all for me, WWE 2K23 gets a golden up. Uh, sorry, Simon Miller. But yes, I'm borrowing that phrase for this. It gets a golden up. I have been Andrew Pollard from What Culture Wrestling. WWE 2K23 is on general release from March 17th. Take care and be well.